at uh, Tropicana Field. I actually got to pull him aside for a few minutes, and we cleared the air, had a nice long chat. You know, we both apologized for some things over the years and mm -hmm. realized that this is this is where we both belong. This is where we both want to be. And, uh, yeah, and I've actually uh, – it's been a really exciting time for me personally to be able to rekindle a friendship that meant so much to me over the years. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome down to the After Chat here at Sports Key to Wrestle Binge. Very special guest, one of my favorite broadcasters here. You see him every week on uh, on SmackDown, and we've got bad news going right. No, we don't. Actually, we've got his uh, tag team partner here. Welcome, Corey Graves, to the After Chat. Oh, thank you for having me, Bill. I appreciate it. It's been a long time. I've I've been waiting to catch up with you. I don't run into you as much as we used to, so it's, it's no, good to be able to don't. sit down and chat a little bit. We don't. When, and I remember when we met a couple of times, you told me you were a big fan of the magazines growing up, too. Absolutely. I think I think everybody was, at least for my generation. I mean, you, you are a, a bit of an unsung hero in this world well, in the sense you. that you, you provided a lot of access to a lot of fans who didn't have any other place to get it. Thank so we're, uh, we're eternally grateful for that. We, are the, we were the Internet. Um, uh, we were print bait. Yeah, print paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Print paper. <laughs> absolutely. I just came up with that. So I want to talk to you for a few minutes about some various things that are going on. WrestleMania weekends coming up, but before we get to that, there's a whole new administration. TKO, Triple H running the show. Tell us what the feel is. What's the buzz like now? It's definitely different, and I would say, just like in any business, there's a bit of a transition period from the old regime until the new regime really gets their feet underneath them, and I feel like it couldn't have happened at a better time. Uh, I feel like that we are at that point now where, where the machine is running at full capability right now, yeah. and it's WrestleMania season, so you always want to put your best foot forward, and there, there are always going to be hiccups, and there are going to be changes, and, and it's against human nature to to really enjoy change oftentimes, so, so there's definitely been a few adjustments made around, but I would say with complete confidence that the changes have all been for the better. Um, the, the culture backstage has changed. Uh, it's, it's got a very much of a team atmosphere now. Um, granted, it's an individual business. Everybody's got to look out for themselves, but it feels very much like a team that everybody's working toward the common goal to continue to grow WWE uh, mm -hmm. and, and really enjoy this boom period we're, we're living in right now. Triple H is an old school guy in the new school world, and he balances it so absolutely perfectly. Tell us about your your dealings with Triple H now that the new regime is in. I think I think you hit the nail right on the head. He is an old school guy. From he's a wrestling historian, and he's a fan. He's a lifelong fan, but he understands this in a way that I don't know too many people on on earth understand the sports entertainment business. And it's been a, a breath of fresh air. And it, it, his, he's been very easy to deal with, very easy to approach. And I think the biggest change has been the amount of freedom that the talent has, myself included. Uh, I'm not micromanaged. Michael Cole's no longer micromanaged. And of course, there are going to be rules and guidelines and, and I mean, do you no you longer can... have, do you no longer have somebody in your ear? Oh, or... I, I still have various people in my ear. It's just, okay. it's no longer a constant stream of consciousness and it's right. no longer, I, I think, Triple H has been great about placing a little bit more trust in everybody and allowing people to show what they're capable of and put their own spin on it, whether that be putting together a match or for, from my perspective, commentary and how I describe things. It's no longer, this is how you have to do it. I want it done this way. It's okay, here are the ideas we need to convey. Put them in your own words. And I like to think that, you know, it's, it's a work in progress and things will continue to get better as, as this team overall works together and, and under this, this leadership. I think it's a really exciting time and should be an exciting time for the business as a whole. That entire situation with when you're saying put things in your own words, uh, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk um, and Seth frickin Rollins, it almost seemed like they were told 15 minutes, get out there, you know what to do. Well, that's, that's, I think, a, an element that was missing from particularly WWE for quite some time was the, the personal issue, the, the reality aspect of it. Um, yes, we've got the most amazing athletes in the world, but as a fan, I know when I grew up, I loved it a little bit more when I really thought that these two guys couldn't stand one another and that they might get into it backstage and not it's it just it feels a lot more organic and reality based and that's something i know that, that hunter has been very proud of and worked very very uh 
diligently toward bringing more of that into our into our product and look no further than how we went off the air on Monday night with The Rock and Cody. I mean, oh, from, yeah. from the strong language to seeing the old crimson mask uh, for the first time in a long time. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely change happening. Oh, that was that was so dusty. It was one hundred percent. Yeah, it really was. We were talking about um, uh, issues and stuff like this. CM Punk being back. We know there was a history between the two of you. You're feeling now that he's back. I am proud to report that uh, it's all water under the bridge. It was actually yes. at the Royal Rumble. I finally had a chance in person. I, I, I bumped into him briefly the night of Survivor Series backstage, but it was chaotic. He had just come back. Everything was was at 11 at the moment. So the day of the Royal Rumble, it's uh, Tropicana Field. I actually got to pull him aside for a few minutes and we cleared the air, had a nice long chat. You know, we both apologized for some things over the years and mm -hmm. realized that this is, this is where we both belong. This is where we both want to be. And uh, yeah, and I've actually, uh, it's been a really exciting time for me personally to be able to rekindle a friendship that meant so much to me over the years. And I am truly as excited to have Punk back here under the WWE banner as just about anybody. That's fantastic. So before we get to what's coming up at WrestleMania, how is uh, Mrs. Corey Grave doing? She is magnificent. Uh, she is thriving in her motherhood era. Uh, it's obviously it's Carmela's first. Uh, our, our son Dimitri, he's just over four months old. He is a giant. I think he's he's got the genes to be the next WWE superstar. Uh, but she's she's doing fantastic. She'll actually be around. She has a few appearances scheduled WrestleMania weekend which will be the first time she's been back in the fold since, you know, stepping away to, to be pregnant. Uh, so she's excited to, to dip her toe back into the water. Um, it's just, it, it's a, a major life adjustment. You know, motherhood and WWE sometimes can be tr tricky to juggle both simultaneously. So she's doing the best she can. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But let's be honest, she's the one that's waking up in the middle of the night, not me. So. <laughs> You heard it here exclusively on the after chat. What, a, <laughs> what, what an absolute scoop. Talking about getting your foot wet again, you've been cleared now to, uh, if you want to get back into the ring. So if and when that happens, who's the dream match for you? Uh, I honestly, I mean, I, I could give you five different answers for that, but I can honestly say my focus has really shifted. Uh, I, I got cleared, it was almost two years ago now, and it was in the midst of a, a lot of different things were happening professionally and personally, and I was sort of looking for, for something to scratch that itch. Um, but since I've slid over into the now lead role on Friday Night SmackDown in the commentary booth, that's actually provided me with a, a lot more motivation and a new skill to learn and to, to focus on. And, it, you know, as much as this is the biggest sports entertainment company in the globe, it can be Groundhog Day from time to time. And you, you see the same faces and you do the same things. And I, I honestly was on autopilot half the time doing, you know, SmackDown or Raw from a color perspective. Uh, so to have this new role, I've been able to put 100% of my focus and energy in that. With that said, again, if the opportunity ever presented itself where it made mm -hmm. sense and it, where it could be part of a larger story, I'm beyond the point of, I, I don't need that WrestleMania moment for my own ego. I just am a willing participant and another character that can hopefully be thrown into the mix in, in some capacity as needed. But I think I've, I've scratched the itch uh, fairly well recently. Okay, okay, that's a, that's, a, that's a good answer. So you're not after Roman Reigns or Seth Rollins? No, and, and any of those guys. I mean, I would love to step in the ring with Seth again. I mean, Seth was one of my favorite opponents in yeah. FCW and in NXT when we were first coming up. I would love to step in the ring with Punk again. It's been many, many years. Um, and as far as my personal favorite these days, I'm a big Gunther fan. I'm oh, in I no hurry, no hurry to step inside the ring with the ring general.